Paul's translation just goes hand in hand with transcription. When you made the messengers, he didn't go that he makes the protein. All right. This is a picture I found. That's a picture I found of trans transfer RNA. Most times it's written like this. But that's how I really lived in my life. And th this is the, right there is the antidote. Laying right here is a messenger. There's a messenger. And this part ties on to the messenger part. If the messenger says CCC, that's going to say GGG. Because this is your anticodone for the messenger. And on, at the other end, well, that's the protein. I mean, that's the amino acid. So, if the messenger says A, 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 then this will say U, U, U. And that is the amino acid that was called for. And if there are 10 amino acids, there'll be 10 of these things. Each one carrying its own amino acid. And they'll line up one by one. Uh, translation is, is not any harder than transcription. It's really just reading and flipping the letters. If you see an A, you think U. If you see a U, you think A, C, G, G, C. All right, let's get into it. Now, a lot of stuff I've done, told you about. Um, translation involves reading the messenger RNA. That's made and leaves the nucleus, okay? And the, the messenger RNA is going to be used by the ribosome to make the protein. One amino acid at a time. Click, 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 click. Almost like the little, little packet balls you can buy and put together for kids to play, make a little necklace. We have some at school that I just saw in there that can be used. And I thought, man, that's kindergarten stuff. But they have it set back in there. I might one day drag them out and see how they're going to work. But um, the messenger, as you know, is made by the nucleus, or not made in the nucleus, it leaves the nucleus, travels out to, to the cytoplasm where it finds a ribosome. Now, either a free ribosome or one that's attached to, you remember how the rough reticulum had dots all over it? Those dots were ribosomes? Well, that messenger can find either one of the ribosomes floating around or one of the ones attached to the reticulum. If it's floating around, that protein will be used by the cell. If it's attached to the reticulum, that protein is going to be shipped off to be used somewhere else in the body. Because the reticulum is your railroad system to get things out of the cell. So if the protein manufactured is going to be make more cell stuff, it's made by the free ribosomes that are actually floating around the cell. If it's going to be made somewhere else, used somewhere else, made here, like made in China, used in the United States, it's going to be attached to the ribosome on the ER. And the ER, ER is just an airplane that flies it away and takes it somewhere else. But both times, though, it's the ribosome. Ribosomes make proteins. I don't care where they're hooked at. And whatever DNA directed, that's what it is going to make. Now, I already showed you this a minute ago. Huh? It ships somewhere else outside of the cell? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be like a hormone that gets you your blood and goes somewhere else. Um, I showed you two subunits. I said there's a, there's a big one over a small one. And the messenger just slips between them. And like reading Braille, it reads right along. As it reads along, it is translating. And then the transfer is bringing in. And I, and I think there's some good videos on this one that I have on it. Um, that, that amino acyl. I don't worry about that. The, the, you're going to see this term used in a, a number of places. I just put it on there because that's the real name of it. But we just call it tRNA. It's really amino acyl tRNA. And because, see, it has an amino group attached to it. That means the amino group is attached to this one. The one leaving is not this because the amino group has been, has been removed and used to make protein, okay? I got homework coming up, so get ready for it. 
Okay, here, here's how it This is a fact. The picture picture painted or a copy of it. I was born in 1950. Let me help you know that. I was born in 1950. I was five years old when they discovered us. I didn't know this course. I just entered kindergarten. So I want to know first off, without this device, we would never have even seen the ribosome. So the first one is what instrument allowed us to see the sucker. And the second one, who was the one? He didn't name it, but he discovered it and said what it does. He got a Nobel Prize for doing so. But somebody else came along and said, I'll call this a right sucker. So the guy who discovered it did not name it. So I want three things. I want to name the device that made it all possible. Without this device, we would never have been there. Second thing, who was the man who was given credit for discovering the ribosome, even though he did not name it? He did win a Nobel Prize for a lot of money. And then later on, later on, another guy came along and named it a ribosome. So that's what I want. I'm going to check ahead. So those three things, there's not a whole lot, but there's zero. Don't do it. It helps you grade anyway. But I want to know what instrument made it possible. I want to know who is the one who actually discovered it that did not name it. <laughs> and the guy who named it, I don't think he won a prize for it. I don't think he won a Nobel Prize. And he used Latin to name it. But the guy who discovered it, he got he got all the kudos. Okay? And that's, and, uh, that's what they're not like. I mean, this, 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 is, this is cutting edge right here, baby. So everything we know about the ribosome we discovered in the last 55 years. I'm 60 years old. And we're discovering, discovering more. There'll be more prizes given out this year for more discoveries. Much more detail. I mean, this guy discovered it. Next guy probably figure out how it actually works. Alright. This is where a camera pays off. Or a camera phone pays off. That way you don't have a mistake on what you copy. I don't know how to do all that high tech stuff. Oh, sorry. Who named it? Who discovered it? Who? What instrument is used to see it? Huh? I said, who, what instrument is used to see it? Right. Who named it? Right. And who discovered it? No, no, no. It? no who named it? Number two is who discovered it. Who discovered Three it? Who named it? Yeah. You got it backwards. Okay. So don't go backwards in your hands. All mm. right. Um, that those are the three I thought were easily answerable, and they're interesting to me. I, I, I kind of like bio history a little bit. A lot of folks discover things by backing into them. They're they looking at something else, discovered this instead, and that got all the credit. So uh, you might want to read about how he actually came to discover it. How old did you say? Huh? How old did you say? What's your age? Oh, I'm sixty. Oh, actually, I'm sixty-one. I'll be, be 62 in December. I'm 61 right now. But um, five years old, went discovered. I, I went to a family reunion one time to a little schoolhouse in, in Box Springs. And in that schoolhouse was a book of biology that fit. And his name was in it Paul Tell. Being a polite guy, I put it back. I should have stolen that book. <laughs> I should have took that book. I regret this day. I didn't take it. I was looking through it. There's nothing about DNA. There's nothing. There's no more so thin. We didn't know anything about biology back then. And I, to this day, I regret. It, the school, it wasn't in session. It was just, now it's community center. But they stored the books back there. And I was like, biology. I took it out and looked through it. You know, and I hey, my daddy. And being an idiot, I put it back. No, I was. Daddy would go, man. My father, eighty-three years old. How old was that book he read? Yeah, no. Yeah, keep a copy. I didn't. I put it back. The idiot me. 
That was his elementary school book? Or? Uh, I think about the junior high school book. Oh, good. But I, I just can't believe I'm looking back. I, I, to this day, I kick myself for that. I'm going back looking for it. Yeah, you won't see it. But I recall just how, how thin the book was. There's nothing in there but DNA. The DNA was covered like in 50. This is like, you know, later on. All the things you're learning now was not even known back when my father was taking biology. My dad said, biology, it was easy. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> Take it now, our books are this thick now, Dad. I think you didn't know that. Okay. Now I told you that on the end of the tRNA is amino acid. And that acid becomes part of protein that's being manufactured. And when you know three and five, right? The three and five ends, how things, the five mm -hmm. has a point on it and it sticks into three of time. It's the same way too. I mean, when they come in, they come in five leading. And they hook up this way. Um, Excuse me, so what, is, what is the homework do? Um, tomorrow. We'll make it free tomorrow. Okay. You can email it to me tonight. Uh, give it to me on paper tomorrow. Okay. It's due 24 hours. Most folks are going to find it tonight if I email me the answer. And you can probably send like that. I would email attach you something, something like that. Just and then email me the answer. Or if you want to put it on paper, give me a paper tomorrow. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, homework's always 24 hours. <coughs> Let's say different. Okay. Um, the tRNA has an anticodone that reads the codone on a messenger, as I told you that. And one by one, the acids come right on in. Um, all the protein is in the chain of those acids, like like a pearl necklace. Every pearl is amino acids. And they're... They, um, That's a front... That's wrong. A front one and an end one, then, right? <coughs> Before those three letters, a front and an end one, stop and start. What were so you, you asking? The anti and the codon. There's two of them, then. Like in that picture that you drew for us of there being three, then there was actually six, right? Yeah. Oh, every three is a message. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, okay. Like okay. If there's, if there's, That's what I think I know. Right here. Okay. They all start with the with the amino acid called methanone. That's always your starting code, methanone. I'll keep that back. They have three ending codes. And all the code does is doesn't code for an acid. There's, there's, there's nothing answering. And when that comes along, then the messenger is released. Now the messenger goes outside there. And every three of those bases is a acid. If if the three on the amino is C, C, C. And a three on the transfer is going to be G, G, G. But think back. That's what the, the nucleus said. Because if I say G, 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 she says C, 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 and you come in with G, 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 which is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So every three indicate, every three is an amino acid. It's not one acid. Every three letters code for a particular amino acid. And we have the sequence worked out. I think I have it on here somewhere. And yeah, there's two codons per each amino acid. But there's one codon per amino acid. There's an anti and a codon. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. This is the codon that's in the messenger. That links on the next. Three letters. And this is the codon from the transfer, three letters. Right. And then out here somewhere is the amino acid what you be stuck on. So I guess you think that way there too. But my mind says these three are answered by these three. These three came from the DNA, right? The opposite. So if the DNA said T, 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 these three say A, A, A. And these three come in saying U, U, U. Which really is what the DNA called for in the first place. So yeah, I, yeah these two codons are going to are be complementary to each other. This one's on the messenger, and this one is, he only has three. Transfer only has three. If this transfer was an ACT, he go right on by. It's just happenstance that he finds it. And they're always moving around. But if this was CCC, 
and this is CCC, they won't come. They, they, he'll keep on going. But when he finds one that's GGG, he'll do. And then he'll leave empty and go out and get another one. And the next code on in line says CGC, well, when the right one comes in, he'll match. He don't know yet that they come along in random. If they happen to match, they style up. And he don't go looking for them. If, if this thing is A, 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 it don't say, go find me a U, U, U. All kinds come back. And finally, the one that's right looks up, gives us amino acid, and he leaves empty. Get another one. And so a lot, of, you know, a lot of people think that the messenger is actually giving instructions, go find me a CCC. And that's not happening. Um, a ton are coming by. And when one of them finally matches, it lands and delivers the amino acid and it leaves. And then they keep swirling. And the next code, if it's an um, AAA, then it's looking for a UUU. If AAA comes by, it just keeps on going. And finally, right when it shows up, delivery, leave. So it's not like me giving a direction that says, go out and find me this. It's not like that. It's just a pure random thing. And the food you eat delivers, well, you eat nucleic acids in your meal. And if you don't have one, you can have problems that you cannot deliver and make the protein. That protein might be the one called fibrinogen, which makes blood clotting happen. If you don't have the amino acid to make it, you're going to be a free bleeder. You're going to bleed, bleed, bleed. Okay? This is the most often look that we do. And I don't work... All, that, the, all these little things have names. I don't care about the names of them. I've never forgotten the names myself. But if you look carefully, the bonding is perfect. And right down here, these three of the anticodone for these three. And this is a three to five. So it'll come in like this, and C would call for a G. And G would call for it. Now, if this thing was U, 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 it ain't gonna land. If it's a G, G, C, it lands. Right here is the amino acid being delivered. The acid snaps off, becomes part of the, um, the protein. This thing now, without this, leaves and goes finds another one. The only carrot is one kind that's right there. And that's alanine. And there, there are 20 kinds of amino acids. There's only 20 of them. But the way you combine them makes all the proteins that you have had. Okay. Um, there's the anticodone. This is the codone. And this is the messenger. There's, there's more right here also. Like I said, you might find one that says AAA come flying by, but he won't land, he keeps on going. Finally one GGC fly, and he lands. Because this is one that he matches with. Um, these things are floating around inside the cytoplasm. They're everywhere in the cytoplasm. And they're just floating, and they're just happenstance. If the right one comes by, he hooks up and delivers his load. The trick is, I want this. And if this is the first one in my in my acid, that'd be the first one you code for. And when he delivers it, this right here, it looks like upside down key to me today. Think about it. But that's not what's name. It happens like a T. But it's transferring amino acids from the cytoplasm to the ribosome where it's going to weld them together. This is a picture I showed you earlier. This is the real structure of how it really looks. And right here is the anticodone that we put right there. There is the amino acid that this whole, ain't very big is it? But this whole thing there's a transfer RNA that's carrying this amino acid. There's your acid. There's your acid. And when this thing lines up, this acid is flipped off 
and join to the previous amino acid or the last one and this thing goes away empty-handed goes outside in the cytoplasm and finds no one of these so you can do it again later on but this is how we often depict it and even here the higher bonds that make sure it maintains that that cross shape for life of me I can't see how this became that I don't see anything in there that looks like a T, you know? But folks who are smarter than me said, well, I see the bonds. I see the pink and the green, the pink and the green. I guess this is black and gray. I see the bonding happening, but I don't have enough intelligence, apparently, to take this and change it to that. I just know they're probably the same. Alright. Now you feeding the RNA through the ribosome. TRNAs are coming in giving amino acids. That is called translation. All they're doing, the ribosome, he is not reading the messenger. He's just gluing together the proteins. The transfer is reading the messenger. But not really reading it. If the right transfer happens along, he delivers his, his, his amino acid. And all the ribosome does, like welder, welds them together. He's not reading the, 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 the messenger, he's just welding together acids. And as the messenger slides through him, where the base the acid coming from, they're coming from tRNAs that are arriving and, dip, and just giving, here's another one, weld them on. And they leave and go outside like, like I load a dump truck, goes a job, dumps his load, leaves empty. New load comes back, TRA the same thing. Arrives at a job, dumps his acid, leaves, gets another one, comes back. But there are 20 kind of dump trucks in this thing because every dump truck has a particular load. And the foreman who says, I need some AAA. Well, that's the message. Well, the dump truck carrying you, you, you shows up because you know it's an anti, right? So when the UU shows up and delivers this load, well that's just one more acid of your protein. That dump truck leaves empty. Because you might need another one later on in the process. Goes and gets one. And your diet, what you eat, is how you get the amino acids from the, the plant, the black eyed peas, the cow, whatever. You gotta have them to build your proteins. I tell you right now. Your protein is not like the cow protein and not like the black eyed pea protein. The A in a cow, the A in a black eyed pea, same as your A. But it's the way you arrange them that makes it become human protein. And the way the cow arranges them, it becomes cow protein. Are you, are you know, if, if you, how many folks here can, can read Spanish? It's the same letters, is it not? Same letters, right? It's just the way they're arranged. Well, Spanish might be my protein. English might be some other protein. It's the same amino acids. It's how they're arranged that makes the, the sense of it for the what you're inside of it. I'm looking, I think, I think I'm going to stop. I'm about to go off another, another tangent. Yes, yeah, so let's stop here. Um, I want to stop on 1 9. If you remind me, I'll upload that. My, my corrected PowerPoint. I don't think I'll be fixing the outline that fast, but I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to. And I'll put it probably on 